So, a little bit of backstory before we begin. So, I've been a fan of Tokusatsu since around 2003. And if you count Power Rangers and the rest of the Saban Entertainment Productions, then technically since 1993. About seven or so years ago, I became a little bit of a recluse and kind of isolated myself from the rest of the world. And I still watched many of the things that I enjoyed, but with hardly any community outreach. So there's a few things that I felt out of touch with. One of these things was toku that existed outside of Japan. And of course, I am aware of other tokusatsu, you know, prior to seven years ago, but I didn't know of anything that happened in the interim. So in one of my most recent Twitch streams, a viewer noticed all the stuff that was behind me, and I guess they realized that I was into things such as toku, and mentioned if I knew of a particular show. That show was Bima Satria Garuda. I obviously did not know anything about this show, so I looked it up, and the first thing I saw was Bima's suit, and instantly fell in love with this design. I managed to find both seasons for this series and started watching. Now, I have not finished this show as of this recording, so if you have seen it, please do not spoil it in the comments section. This will serve more as a preview, as an informal preview, of what this show is while trying to get others who have not ventured outside of the main toku shows to take a gamble once in a while. And you might like what you see. Now, what is Bima Satria Garuda? It's a tokusatsu coming from Indonesia. And the motive makes sense with its country of origin. For those unaware, the Garuda is to Indonesia like the bald eagle is to us Americans. It's their national symbol and is even featured in their coat of arms, of which the colors symbolized on there are gold, black, white, and red, making Bima a very patriotic-looking hero in a certain context. The show is produced by local media company Indonesia MNC, and to my surprise, Ishinomori Productions, who makes none other than the Kamen Rider series. Now, before talking about the show itself and what its plot and characters are all about, please take this disclaimer to heart. Bima Satria Garuda does not have the production values of Kamen Rider or even Super Sentai. And honestly, when I first watched this, I thought the series was much older than it actually was. It's important to note that when watching something from a different time or location, that you understand specifically what can and can't be achieved in some locales. Don't let that ruin any of the enjoyment you may potentially have watching something. And look, the budget of the show is painfully obvious. A lot of its sets are very enclosed and usually there's not a lot of extras. And sometimes in the background you might notice, you know, regular people uh, looking at the filming set. The story of Bima Sadria Garuda revolves around the discovery of a parallel world by a couple of scientists. However, the beings that they came into contact with were actually from the Vudo Empire, and with the discovery of this Earth, now want their resources for themselves. Our main character is Ray, the son of one of these scientists, and when the Vudo Empire attacked his home, he was left orphaned. Fast forward 21 years, and wow, it's actually weird to have a hero that's a bit older than your usual kid show lead. But that's kind of cool. So anyway, Ray works at a bike shop, but feels called to action when the Voodoo Empire suddenly begins attacking again. He meets up with a mysterious guy named Mikhail that helps him fight off the enemy forces. While saving Mikhail's life, Ray's blood makes contact with his, and thus it's made clear. Ray is to become Bima. He's given the Red Power Stone and with it is able to transform into our titular hero. As I mentioned before, I absolutely love this suit. 
And I really like that it's its own thing as opposed to a derivative based off of a Kamen Rider or Super Sentai aesthetic. This suit just screams power. And it's not top or bottom heavy. And it's not feeling out of place with lacking any sort of a belt. Actually, the lack of a belt kind of helps its aesthetics. Its color scheming, as I mentioned before, you can kind of call it patriotic. But it's still a badass color combination. And not just because I'm biased towards red, black, and gold. Shout out to Austin St. John, Red and Gold Ranger. The enemies of the first series are the Voodoo Empire. The first villain introduced and the cause of Ray's parents' death is called Iron Mask. This guy reminds me of Destro from G.I. Joe, and that's not a bad thing. Actually, most of the villains in this show are very well designed. The leader of the Voodoo Empire is Rasputin, and his design is just great as well. So, budgetary constraints aside, this show just screams charisma from a creative standpoint. The fighting is more or less your standard choreography, but because of the lack of CG, a lot is done using practical effects. Camera tricks, and even in my opinion, this gives the fights a little bit more grit and raw appeal than the flashy moves we see in other tokusatsus recently. After the first couple of episodes, the show does get a bit more episodic with a Monster of the Week formula playing a role in that sense. But I don't mind it. Now, I don't want to do what some other folks on YouTube do and break down the whole series. Because I'm in the mindset that you really should watch a show for yourself to make a proper assumption of things. And not get a skimped down version that others will run through. The first series is actually not that long and only spans 26 episodes. But in my busy schedule, it can take a while for me to actually watch that in a short amount of time. Now, as I progress through this series, there's a good chance that I might do a full series review of the first season and then the second season, or maybe even a mid. Uh, but those will obviously take time to produce and go through, so it'll be a while before those come around. There are fan subs available for this show, however, and attempting to find it may lead you to sail to high seas. Plus... If anyone is interested, I have started to try something new on my Twitch channel. Like, if you pay attention to his uh, left leg, yeah. Yeah, that shit looks like it hurt. But he took that shit like a champ. Ooh. Hold on. I gotta pause it at, like, the right part. Okay. Ugh. Ugh. Oh my god. Taking it like a champ. Dude took that shit like Gumby. Look at that. Wow. As opposed to just playing games, I've started doing watch parties. So if anyone is interested in potentially watching this show, let me know and I can probably make it happen. But yeah, I just wanted to shed light and give a little bit of a shout out to something that's outside of the norm. And if anyone has any ideas of other non-Japanese toku I should check out, let me know as well. Because I love discovering this type of stuff and sharing my thoughts on it. But that's all for me. I'll catch you on the next one.